Hi, today I'm using my double barred tripod, my heavy tripod. I've got a choice of two. I've got a lightweight tripod when I've got to walk a fair distance and a heavy tripod, hopefully, when I don't have to walk so far. So it's uh, say double barred, they call these tripods, really designed for video work. A very heavy Vinton blue tripod head on top of there, proper video head. And the reason I'm taking a heavy tripod, even though it is a bit far to walk, is I'm expecting today to have to use the big lens, maybe even up to the equivalent of a 2000 mil. I'm going to have a lot of vibration problems, especially because it's getting a bit windy at times as well, and that will cause vibration. So that's it. I've just got to pretend that I'm still young and fit. So this is Upper Bittle Reservoir in the Midlands. It's a place I would have come to when I was young, when I was first starting to bird watch, but I don't come here very often anymore. It's not a photography place. But for the last week, there's been a red-throated diver here and people have been posting pictures of it on the internet. And I haven't rushed to come to photograph it because we're on top of a dam and the dam is quite high above the water and I don't like looking down at my birds. You can't get down to the water's edge here. The first thing you have to do is scan all the great crested grebes that are out there, and there's a lot of them. And in the winter plumage, they look very similar to a red-throated diver. Once you've picked out which one is the diver, then even with your naked eye at 150 meters, you can tell it apart. It's got a different shape to it. It's a slightly larger bird and chunkier and just is a bit lower in the water as well. In fact, the back of the neck is often under the water. It's sort of a U shape. Now in my camera bag, I always keep the lens and the camera body on and the lens hood. So I have to have a big enough camera bag to hold that length. But today, because there's these gusts of wind keep coming, I'm going to take the lens hood off. This would make no difference to stills photography. This is only because I'm shooting video and you get a lot of vibration problems with video. And the wind will catch this, it's like a big sail and cause vibration. So I'm just reducing the, the sail area, if you like. And then on top of that, we have the small rig device and that's gonna support the front of the lens as well to help the vibration. Now, I'm not expecting this bird to come very close. I've got the GH6, Lumix GH6 camera body on because I'm mostly going to do video today. We've got the 150 to 400 mil lens. I've got the 1.25 extender in place, so that makes it a 500 mil lens. Plus, it's a two times crop factor, so that puts us up to 1000 mil. I've also got on the two times extender, so that makes it a 2000 mil lens and at 2000 mil you do get a lot of vibration issues so that's going to be the biggest problem especially when this wind keeps building up the other problem you have at 2000 mil is finding the bird in the viewfinder now i'm actually fairly good at it i've been doing it a long time and it's like throwing and catching a ball the more you do it the better you become at it so i can usually pick a bird up quite quickly at 500 mil, 1000 mil, yes, but at 2000 mil, I'm struggling. You can line up, you've got the hot shoe here, you can look along the, the hot shoe, line it up to the top of the lens, and that helps, that makes a big difference. With a static bird on the water like this, that's not so helpful for birds in flight, but it works quite well with just a bird on the floor or a bird on water. Once I've picked the bird up in the viewfinder, I get the camera running, leave it running and it's no good touching the handle after that because i'll get so much vibration from my hand through the handle into the viewfinder it will be terrible so then i go to the bungee cord that i've got permanently attached to my pan handle and i'm following the bird watching the the rear screen here and just panning with it like that i can go up and down as well but mostly with a swimming bird i'm just panning right or left I'm reliant upon the autofocus because if I start manually focusing, which I do a lot with video, again I'll get too much vibration. But it's a slow moving bird and the autofocus on the GH6 is coping in video mode. I find in video mode autofocus is still nowhere near as good as stills mode. 
Once you've scanned all the great crested grebes in their winter plumage, it becomes obvious which one is the red-throated diver. It's a very different body shape. Similar colour, but it's much lower in the water and stubbier. Divers can go through prolonged periods where they're just loafing about on the water. They're not feeding, they're just swimming around. And then they go through a period where they keep diving and every 30 seconds or so they dive under looking for fish. The other thing to notice about this bird is the upturned bill. You can see it slightly sloping upwards. That tells us it's a red-throated diver. The black-throated diver will be more horizontal. When you're doing video it's a bit awkward because I didn't know this bird was going to do a wing stretch and ideally I'd have had the camera running for five seconds before it did it. So it sort of caught me out as a stills picture, it wouldn't matter, I would have got it. Things have changed a lot, the wind has died down, therefore the water goes smoother and I prefer it when it's smoother and the bird's been coming very close as well. I've now only got the 1.4 extender on with the internal 1.25 extender. I think that's 1,400 mil. Yeah, yeah. And optically, there's a big difference. You do get some reasonable pictures with the 1.4. Although I generally prefer birds on smoother water, I do also take advantage of large waves. Not just a wind blowing, but a real gale. And then you get large waves crashing over the birds at times. And that can be effective. But generally speaking, I like this smoother effect with a reflection in the water. When the bird comes really close, it emphasises that you are so high up and looking down at it. I really don't like this angle. Ideally, I'd have been in the boat with this fisherman. He got very close to it and at a very low angle. Just two stills pictures to show you. This one is taken with the external 2 times extender and the built-in 1.25, so the equivalent of 2000mm on a full chip camera. The image quality isn't fantastic. When I look at it on my monitor, you can see there's a lack of detail in the feathering. It doesn't really show up on YouTube, and it doesn't look so bad when you're shooting video either. This picture is with the 1.4 external extender and the built-in 1.25 much better quality. This is something I'd forgotten about. Because we're on a dam, we are level with this hedgerow here. And I was here in the spring because there was a greenfinch singing on top of here. And I was trying to get footage of that. I didn't succeed. But there's a few berries still left on this hedgerow. And the advantage of being on a bank is we're level with it. And I never like looking up at birds in the trees. I want to be level with them. So there's been a blackbird just taking a few hawthorn berries. So that's made a, another additional clip. But it's something you're looking for all the time is where there's a bank so you get level with hedgerows. So this footage is also taken with the two times and the built-in 1.25 extender. And when you're shooting video, the quality looks fine. It's actually turning me into quite a lazy photographer. I can now work at such distances. I don't have to worry about hides and all the other things you had to do to get close to birds. It's becoming easier and easier. Thanks for watching.